Hello, my name is Matt Max. In this new series, I'm going to explain the basics of orbital mechanics using a game called Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program is an awesome game where you can create your own rockets, your own satellites, your own rovers, you can fly to other planets, to the moon, rock around it, drive your rover around it, whatever you want, basically. And most importantly, it gets Newtonian physics right. This means that the majority of orbital mechanics space agencies have to deal with in reality do apply to this game. Orbital mechanics being the application of physics to the practical problems of, safe, of space travel. So how do we actually get into orbit? How do we change orbits? How do we get to the moon or whatever, right? How, how is that actually done? If you are interested in space exploration, if you always wanted to know how it's actually possible to get to the moon and not totally miss it, then this game and this series is for you. So without further ado, let's jump actually into the game right away to show you the very basics of orbital mechanics and I will build on this in the next episodes. Alright, so welcome to Kerbal Space Program. If you've never seen Kerbal Space Program before, don't worry. I'm going to explain everything you need to know when you need to know it. So, for the moment, let's just start this rocket and let's start to go upwards. If you would ask a kid, you know, how do a, does a rocket get into orbit? How does it get into space? Uh, the kid probably says, you know, it just goes up. And that's what we're doing right now. We will just go upwards and then we will see what happens if we really just go up. So you see the speed relative to the surface right here. And this, this U right here, that's the direction the rocket is facing in. And this yellow symbol is the direction the rocket is traveling in. At the moment the rocket is traveling straight up and it's looking straight up so both of those are exactly above each other. But that will change. Right here you see our altitude and that's the density of the atmosphere which will obviously go down. You actually have to get out of the atmosphere. Otherwise you cannot have a stable orbit because the atmosphere slows you down, right? So you need to have to, to, uh, to leave the atmosphere behind you. Otherwise, you will be constantly be slowed down and then you will crash. Okay, let's just go up and let's look if we get an orbit like this. So what you see right here, that is our trajectory. This is YouTube 2, this is the rocket. This is the apoapsis, the highest point of the orbit, so the point of the orbit farthest away from the surface. And as you see, we are about to crash into the planet. If we continue like this, the apoapsis will continue to go outwards, but let me tell you, we will crash nonetheless. And the reason for that is that rockets actually do not go straight up. So let's wait until this is at about 100 kilometers. Should be any second now, 90, okay. Let's now throttle down before we do not have any fuel left. And let's pause. Rockets do not just go straight up. You can go straight up, obviously, but you will not achieve an orbit like this. What rockets do is they actually go sideways. This is our rocket, this is our planet. Okay, gravity is a red line that that uh, tries to get the rocket down and rockets actually go sideways. Satellites go sideways. And think about this. Our Earth curves about 5 meters downward for every 8 kilometers. What if you would travel 8 kilometers before falling 5 meters? If you would be able to travel 8 kilometers while falling 5 meters or before falling 5 meters, you would miss the planet. You would fall past the planet. You would never hit it. You would constantly be falling, but you would never hit it. That's exactly what, exactly what rockets do as well. You see this line right here, this point where we actually crash to the planet? What if we could move this line so far out that we would miss the planet right here? What would happen if you would do this? And that's exactly what I'm going to try to do. Uh, we're going to travel to the apoapsis. And once we reach the apoapsis, we are going to go east. You now see this yellow symbol. That's the, symbol, the direction we are traveling in. And you now see that we are not traveling in the direction we are looking at right now. Because our direction of travel is this trajectory. And it will change according to this trajectory. Until right here, at the top, it will be dead east, right? This is east, this is west, right? And what I have to do right now is I have to align the rocket into eastern direction. 
and we will talk about why east and not west a little bit later and then I will wait until no that's not what I wanted to do oh well uh, let's just rotate and then I will wait until we reach the apoapsis and then I will accelerate in eastern direction and this will cause this point of the trajectory to go east as well but right now I have to try to get rid of this uh, this rotation it's not that good not good we're outside of the outside of the atmosphere by the way so we will not slow down as long as we're outside of the atmosphere we'll just continue to rotate basically until we crash okay let's now I have to try to really get rid of this rotation and, all right okay okay I think I did it uh, this rocket is not that easy to control I have to say Ugh. Oh wow, this is really difficult to control. So I really cobbled this rocket together in like 10 minutes, that's the reason why it sucks. Let's give it a little bit more thrust. Okay, let's just burn this thing out. Okay. And now we start the other engine. And again, we're just traveling east. And now let's have a look at our, our trajectory. You see that this line is indeed going east. Makes sense, because we are accelerating in eastern direction, right? And if you just continue to go east, which I'm trying to do right here, I could just start the autopilot. Which, oh well. If you continue to go east and accelerate the time a little, I cannot accelerate the time, but if you continue to go east, what you will see is that at some point this line will miss the planet. And that point is about to come out right now. Right about now. Okay, we're now. Um, about the planet and now we actually start to miss the planet completely and BAM we have an orbit slow down oh we almost exploded whoops so now you see that we actually have an orbit we have an apoapsis the apoapsis is at 400 kilometers and we have a periapsis the periapsis is a point of the orbit closest to the planet at about 100 kilometers so it's not circular but it's an orbit and indeed if I speed up the time, what you will see is that we are now in a stable orbit and we will stay in this stable orbit basically forever, right? As long as we do not collide with any of the space debris going around here or as long as we do not actually get into the atmosphere, which would sl slow us down, this orbit will continue basically forever, right? There is nothing that slows us down and an object in motion stays in motion until acted on by an outside force that's Newton's first law. And this is how you basically get into orbit. You're constantly falling, but you're falling around the planet because you constantly miss it. The speed you need to achieve this is in this case, see, in this case it's about 1700 meters per second. On Earth it's about 4.9 kilometers per second, I think, but the speed you need is different for different orbits. The bigger the orbits are, the slower you can be, and the smaller the orbits are, the faster you have to be to constantly miss the planet while falling around it to actually get into orbit. This is called the orbital speed. This concludes the first part of Orbital Mechanics with Kerbal Space Program. My name has been Matt Max, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Don't... Oh, oh, that's not good. Oh, God. It happened. All right, let's restart. The Earth slopes down about five meters. Oh, my God, it crashed again. Okay, I have to work on this rocket. Actually, let... Jesus Christ, holy fuck. Fuck off, fuck off, holy sh- Holy shit. So I'm going to do this until we are at about 
four kilometers and hopes the rocket doesn't break. What the f <sighs> God damn it, holy shit.